Look out. This bitch is about to push out 100 puppies. Oh. I hope. Or at least half of that. We'll see. Hi! If you're there, I don't know if you are, but I just thought this would be something that's fun to share because it is my first Sim challenge ever. And uh, I've only been playing The Sims for a few months, since about April, but I really got hooked because life's been kind of rough. I can't get out much. I'm in a city where I don't know many people. I got too many responsibilities at home. So it's become kind of my escape without being able to leave the house. And I've been having a lot of fun with it. And I've been looking forward to trying some of the fan challenges. And one fan challenge I really was looking forward to trying was the 100 Baby Challenge. Why? For some reason, it always comes back down to family and children for me in The Sims. I've played a few Sims, and I started their storyline thinking, okay, this one's going to be career-oriented, or this one's going to be a criminal, or these people are going to build a commune or a cult or something. I tried all different ideas for storylines, and I always end up focusing characters, having babies, having families, raising children. It's just fun. And I like to watch the 100 Baby Challenges online. I like Little Simsy. And one of the ones I recently got into that's a lot of fun is the Single Girl 100 Baby Challenge. And I thought, well, if a single girl can take on 100 babies, uh, I'm a veteran mom, so I should be able to handle this. So I got rid of all my mods because in the official 100 Baby Challenge rules, you can't use cheats. You can't use any kind of mods that would give you an advantage. And I didn't want to take any chances. So I got rid of all of them except for the mod that the creator of the challenge actually recommended I put that in, so I'm going to see how that is. If you want to know the rules to the challenge, I'm going to link to the original source below. But basically, it is what it sounds like. You have to have a Sim who has 100 babies. Or she, your matriarch, it could be a male, but the matriarch begins by having as many babies as possible. And if she ages up or something happens to her where she can no longer have children, her youngest daughter, the torch will be passed to her. And she would continue. And the goal is to have 100 babies in as few generations as possible. Well, I'm going to go for that and see what happens. I kind of have a plan in my mind, so see how it unfolds. Some of the other rules say things like you can't have the same baby daddy twice. Uh, you can't have a job that requires you to leave the house. You can only work from home or do freelancing. Another rule is that your mom can't get married. Your matriarch can't have one of her boyfriends move in or have the baby daddies come and help either financially or with babysitting. You can't use a nanny. Again, it's an extensive list of rules and there's a couple of variations. I'm going to put the link below. I'm going to try to play as fair and square as possible because otherwise really what fun is it? So I'm starting a new game. Now, she says that you can make any kind of sim you want to start with as your matriarch, and, uh... Ah, Yabasani. And I'm not going to use this because I really want to use a sim hmm. that I had in another game that she's in my, uh... She's in my library. I was playing a game with this elderly person was raising a bunch of foster kids and... and I needed a bunch of teens to kind of move through. So I created a bunch of teens and literally like I would put up the create screen and I would just click, click, click and whatever they looked like, whatever clothes they came out with, psh, done. And this one teen girl came out and I was watching Thelma and Louise. So I came up with a character who I named, I named her Ridley Scott. Yes, after the famous director of Thelma and Louise, Aliens, whatever, one of my favorite directors. And I just, I guess Ridley Scott just sounds a lot better for a girl than Stanley Kubrick. Um, but I put her in the game and I, she was really kind of a non-player character. She was just a teen in the neighborhood who my Sims befriended. And I noticed right off that she was just fun and flirty and she was really flirty. I mean, she flirted with men, she flirted with women, she flirted with... Teens, adults, young adults, elders, children, toddlers. <laughs> I think I've caught her flirting with mailboxes and lampposts at some points. Um, 
So when I was going to do the 100 Baby Challenge, I had saved this character because I always wanted to use her in something. I just knew I wanted to play her somewhere. And uh, I decided she would be a really good fit for the 100 Baby Challenge. So I guess maybe I relate to her too because I was adopted and, and she was a she was a, an orphan. So she kind of um, looks like me too, as I did. Maybe probably a lot prettier, but yeah. And they're you know, both just cockeyed optimists. Let's see. Um, I'm going to age her up, though, from Tina. <laughs> yep, and uh, I guess I'm going to give her third trait. I'm going to make it family-oriented. Oh. Oh. And I'm going to change her aspiration to the specific 100 Baby Challenge aspiration mob. But she's kind of ready to go. Starting in the spring, because that's a time for new beginnings. And I was thinking about doing her in an apartment in San Moschino, but orphan single 20-year-olds rarely have the funds to buy a house. And another issue I have with apartments is lot traits. Because in the official rules, it states that if your lot already has traits, you have to stick to them and there's nothing you can know about it. But... If the lot doesn't have traits, you can give it the traits you want, but you can't change them. You would have to move to get new lot traits. I think lot traits are going to play a real part in success of the game by picking the right lot traits. So I'm going to go for new crest because it's so big and empty, and I like the idea of being able to fill it. It's just a big blank slate, and it's pretty. I think I'm going to go with here because I know there's like parks around here and there's fishing holes and it's on the waterfront so let's move our Ridley to her new land it's raining let's get her something to live in and uh, I am going to actually attempt a build here now fair warning not a builder. Now I will download and I will mess around with making buildings bigger or add-ons, but very rarely have I tried to build something myself. And usually it just starts out as a great big box. So that's what I'm going to start with and then see if I can add on as we go along and see how that works out for her. She still has about 15,000 simoleons. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to keep it a simple box and add on rooms as we go and expand. For now, I'm going to keep it kind of open floor plan. Just give her some privacy in the bathroom and bedroom. I kind of like that. Kitchen. Let's get the essentials in. I'm not going to worry about buying too much in the beginning. Keep it fairly neutral, I guess, at first. Get a... Fridge. Ah, why you spin me right around, baby? Make a little table, poolside dining, square. What's the difference? They look almost exactly the same. This is the way I say it. I am God. I am the God of this world. Maybe that's why I like The Sims. I get my chance to play God. I don't know. But I am God. And we have my people, my world that I am creating. And I have decided that I have chosen this woman for a mission. She is the chosen one because she has the qualities that I feel are what we need to achieve this objective. Her mission is to have as many babies as possible and to grow this family. So I see her as like this, first of all, her background is she was an orphan. Uh, she was raised in foster care. And it never killed her spirit. She still got this happy-go-lucky, positive outlook on life. And believes in love and affection and caring and compassion. And she has this dream. She wants a beautiful, big, loving family. That is why she's, she would appreciate that, and that is why she's been chosen for this mission. 
But she's still young. She's still naive. She's still very inexperienced and has a lot to learn. So she's going to make mistakes. She may be a little too enthusiastic at times, and at times she may get overly dramatic and feel like the world is coming to an end. Ooh, yellow. Just such a cheerful color. So when you, know, you stumble into the kitchen early in the morning, it's just such a nice way to start your day. How much do we have left? 9,000. I want to get her the best bed I can afford to start with. I have this theory that the bed is so important because replenishing yourself is so freaking essential. Purple. I see her as kind of a girl loving purple and pink. She didn't have a lot growing up, so this is kind of stuff that she dreamed about, those pretty pink and purple rooms you see on TV or in the magazines. and So that's the kind of thing that she dreams about. It's like, oh yeah, I always wanted that kind of pretty girly room. That's doing lights. <laughs> Can't go without those. So she's this girl on her own who had a rough life and she bought this little craftsman kind of cozy cottage thing and she's just happy to be here. And she's ready to get her family started, get her life started. And that leaves me space for the first babies to come for if they want a little dollhouse or toy box or you know, put a crib or a tub. Move her stuff over and put a toddler bed in. We got a good start going. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. A house is a very, very, very fine house. First order of business for her is to get a job. You can't get any kind of job where she has to leave to physically go to work, but you can have work at home jobs. So I'm going to have her look for a job. Now I thought about just making her a freelance writer or something like that, but then I thought, why not use a regular job where you actually get family leave? You know, because think about it. She's going to be having a lot of children. And every time she pops one of them puppies, she's getting family leave that she gets paid. If she doesn't get to, write a book or paint a picture, she's not going to get paid for it. So I was thinking about what she can do. And I know like business, I think you can work from home. But you know what? I'm not a business type person. I have another character that was a critic. I had a style influencer because the job was given to her through the tutorial, but I didn't do more than a couple of levels of it. And I always wanted to go back and get into it because it looked kind of fun. So I think I might go with Style Influencer, even though it doesn't pay a whole heck of a lot. Plus the idea of her being kind of this fashionista, it's just, it plays into her character for me. I like that. Okay, so we enter the Style Influencer career. She is a rag reviewer and starts Monday at Smog. And she's not exactly the most fashionable right now, but <laughs> again, I could see her as being so young that she's got a sense for but. It's not quite fully developed yet, and she's, you know, this this could be fun, taking her through different styles as she gets older and grows. So, it's time to go find us a baby daddy. And I think I'm going to leave it here for now, because this is just a lot, I guess. And uh, hopefully next time she will be pregnant and be giving birth to her first baby, and we're really kicking it off. If you're here watching again, thank you, and... Maybe you got directed here by my hub pages or level skip articles, I don't know, or maybe you just found me on YouTube, but if you enjoyed this, please say something, because I don't know, I feel so alone out here, so it would be nice to hear from fellow Sim fans in the comments, that's kind of why I'm doing this, I'm not the kind of person who's a great video creator, I don't expect to be some massive YouTube star, that's not what I'm looking for, um, yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to be one of those people, but it's just being part of the whole Sims community and playing together and seeing each what each other plays and, and commenting and having fun with it is what I'm looking forward to. So uh, just give me a shout out if you're out there, say something down there. Until next time, have a great day.